Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Exciting news, this Saturday at 8 a.m., bright and early, we're having the first men's breakfast again for in uh, three years, actually. So all the men are welcome to come out and we're we'll um, discussing nurturing your faith and why it's important to uh, come together in God's house and worship in person. So everybody's welcome, 8 a.m. this Saturday here at the church. Thank you. Good morning, the Lord be with you. Welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord to worship Him and thank Him for His love, for His mercy, for everything that He gave us through His Son Jesus Christ. Uh, today, we celebrate in the Christian Church the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany, and we follow the order of service that has been printed for this occasion or we follow it on the monitors. A few announcements before we begin our service. Um, let's see. Remember to check your mailboxes. We have the calendar for, two, uh, for February 2023, and as well others information there. So at the end of the service, uh, take a time and go there and take what you have in your own mailboxes. Today we have coffee hours and that's wonderful that we are able to have that, and then we have fellowship downstairs and have conversation and good times. So you are welcome to participate and be there with us. Uh, remember to all committees and organizations that your report need to be sent. The due date is February the, the 12th. Due date is next Sunday. So please work on that and send it to the office or to myself, and then I will forward it to the person who is working on that, to put everything together. Just for inform your information, Liz is not here this week, she's on holidays, and if you need to speak with, with her, so you need to call me, so you have to talk to me. If not, you have to wait until Liz comes back, so that's okay. Uh, for this week, we have elders meeting at 7 p.m. We have ladies Bible study at 10 a.m. on Wednesday, and already was announced men, men's breakfast at 8 on Saturday and as well LWML meet on Saturday at 9.30 a.m. So you are all welcome to, to participate in any of those activities. Well, I think that we are ready to, to worship our, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And at this moment, we are going to present a video about shining the light of Christ that this is the theme for this day, for this Sunday. So let us watch it. The dark can be a bit scary. Things that are unknown. Things that are unseen. The world can seem like a dark place sometimes. Sadness, pain, confusion, even the smallest light can make you feel better. The Bible says that Jesus is the light of the world. His bright presence with us makes us happy. When Jesus lives in our hearts, we become little lights in the world too. So shine your light through every smile, every good deed, every act of love. Make the world a little brighter. Please rise. 
We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue now with uh, God's Kids' Son, Are You Lost in the Dark? We sang that one last Sunday, but I think it's appropriate for the, the theme for, for this morning. be seated. I invite all the children to come forward, be here with me. We have a message, not only for you, but everybody here. So, let's see. Hey, my friend, how you doing? Yeah, come here, come here. So, how's everything with you? So how's everything with you? Everything okay? Yeah. That's wonderful. Good to hear. So you sleep well? Yes. Do you snore? No. No? I don't really snore. You don't snore? Don't Come on. If you don't snore, so that means that you didn't have a good sleep. I can't snore. Okay. So somebody who else snore at home? Can you tell me? It's a secret. No, don't, 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 don't say. <laughs> he was going to say, okay. Okay, so we have a message, you know, and, I, uh, you know, uh, Jesus speaks, you know, Lord, our Lord Jesus says, uh, shining the light. Uh, and, and, he, and what we shine is the light. He's light. So he's the one who is light. So, no, Jesus is the light of the world. And that's what he says. So, but he says that we, we are the light of the world. So how can we be that? How can we be light, and, but is Jesus the light? The thing is that Jesus is the light, and we only shine the light of, of Christ. I'm going to show you something. I, I brought this one, you know, a mirror, a small one. And I, I have what here? Flashlight. Yes, yeah, so we're going to pretend. Let's see. We're going to pretend. Play with me, OK? This is a game. This is Jesus, OK? Do you see? I press here. What happened with Jesus? It's the light. See? Oh. Okay. And, and we're going to pretend that this one is us. That we are. Okay. So your name is? Okay. And each of you is here. Everybody here is this small mirror. Okay. So what happened? What what Jesus is telling us when he shined his light to us, what happened? We reflect his light. Yes. Yes. So we reflect our life to people, people that we are in contact all the time at school. So that's why at, we have shadows. Yes, indeed. That's true. <laughs> we have shadows. But anyway, you see, Jesus shining the light on us, and we reflect that light to other people. But he says to do good works, to, go good, to do good deeds to other people. So if probably I don't want to be bad here, but to you, but I don't know if I could reflect it on each one of you. But anyway, so we're going to show it here in the baptismal font, where we are all baptized. So Jesus 
Jesus shine his light on all baptized people, all those who have been baptized, you see? And what we do, we do good works. We help people that are in need. We pray for people. When they, are, they don't have food, we help them. If we have food, we give food to them. We worship all together with all the saints, with all believers. So all is what Jesus wants us to do, that we bring his light to us, to other people, to bring his word, to bring his care, his love, his forgiveness, oh, everything, good things to other people. And that's the reason Jesus is the light shining on us and reflecting his light. You see here, reflecting his light to other people. And how do we reflect that light? Helping them, praying for them, caring for them, loving them, forgiving them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There are many things that we can do for, for another person. And that's how we shine the light of Christ to other people, with his love and his care for all of us. So it's not wonderful? Yes, see it is. So that's it. It's the end of the message. So I want you to pray with me. Let us pray. So let us put our hands like this. And let us pray. And I invite everybody to pray with me. Dear Lord, Dear Lord we, want we want our light to shine. We ask you to help us. To remember, to remember that you give us, give us the, the light to shine toward others in order to see good works. In your blessed name we pray. Amen. Thank you, my friends. It's good to see you. Yes, yes, and you too, ma'am. Okay, that's it. You could come back. Are you going to to school? Sunday school? Please rise. We continue with confession and absolution. Beloved in the Lord. Let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sins. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for that sake, the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with the entroid, which is Psalm 119, a few verses from that chapter. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart seek you. 
Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the just decrees of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies I delight as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading today 
It's from Isaiah 58, verses 3 to 9. We, why have we fasted, and you see it not? Why have we humbled ourselves, and you take no knowledge of it? Behold, in the day of your fast, you seek your own pleasure, and oppress all your workers. Behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight, and to hit with a wicked fist. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice to be heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day for a person to humble himself? It, is it to bow down his head like a reed, <coughs> and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast, and a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover him, and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? <coughs> then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson is from 1 Corinthians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. God's wisdom is revealed by the Spirit. And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not pro come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I did decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. As I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling, and my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yet among the mature we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages of, uh, for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person, which is in him? Also, so also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The, nat the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them, because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Here ends the word of the Lord. Amen. 
Aleluya, 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 aleluya. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Aleluya, 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 aleluya. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The fulfillment of the law. And we are going to meditate in this text, but specifically verses 14 and 16. Please rise to hear the gospel. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost his taste, how shall his saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets, I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Let us now confess our Christian faith, speaking the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with the sermon hymn.
praise to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear believers in Christ, in the gospel lesson of today, Jesus says that his disciples are salt and light. In ancient times, salt was valued as a preservative. Jesus spoke of that quality of salt and of the illuminating quality inherent in light to describe our role as Christians in our world. We are to represent him in word and deed. This is what Jesus is telling us, that we are, namely, salt and light. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Yes, you, to each of you, me. Yes, we all are, all believers in Christ. That's who we are. This morning, we will concentrate our meditation about being light in the world. Jesus says in our text for meditation, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So what Jesus' followers possess is that they are the light of the world. Now, what is the aspect of light that Jesus focuses upon for our identity? Consider the two illustrations that he gives in verses 14 and 15. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. People do not light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. The point is, that the light gives light to all in the house. Friends in Christ, we must not be hidden. A disciple is supposed to be as obvious as a city set on a hill. True disciples are not hidden. Consider the picture. God did not make you light so that you would be hidden under a basket. Light must shine. No one turns on the light switch in a room and then puts aluminum foil over the light. What does it mean that we are called the light of the world? What does light represent? Now first consider that Jesus called himself the light of the world in John chapter 8 verse 12. He says of himself, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Notice that the concept of light is being able to have life. What the Holy Scriptures tell us is that God is the light, and his word provides direction and guidance for our lives in the darkness. We only reflect God's light into the world. A well-known Bible teacher, Keith Brooks, spoke to a businessman and businesswoman on the Christian's responsibility to be a light in this world. He emphasized that believers are to reflect the light of Christ to the world. After the class, one of the members related to him an experience he had in his home which had impressed upon him the same truth. He said that when he went into his basement, he made an interesting discovery. Some potatoes had sprouted in the darkest corner of the room. At first, he could not figure out how they had gotten enough life to grow. Then he noticed that the cook had hung a copper kettle from the ceiling near a cellar window. She kept it so brightly polished 
that it reflected the rays of the sun unto the potatoes, and they sprang to life. The businessman said to Brooks, when I saw that, I thought I may not be a preacher or a teacher with ability to expound the scriptures, but at least I can be a copper kettle catching the rays of the sun, Jesus, and reflecting his light to someone in a dark corner. So Jesus says, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. That is something quite different. That's the attitude of some Christians in the world. The problem is that many Christians, even though they are to be the light of the world, prefer to cover the light, lest anyone should see it. But that is not what God wants of his people. He wants us to brighten up, to shine as brightly as we can so that people may see what he has done for us and turn from darkness to his marvelous light. And today we ask that God would enable us to brighten up so that we may be bright witnesses of him who has called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. You are the light of the world. Jesus says that as a statement of fact. He does not say that we should be light of the world or that we should strive to be the light of the world. He says we are the light of the world. And that means that everyone who professes to be a Christian is to be the light of the world. It comes with the territory. But that is not so hard to understand. For the light of the Christian is nothing more than the light of Christ reflected on us. And how great his light is. No matter, no matter how dark our lives may, may be seen, no matter how thick the clouds of sin and shame that surround us, this great light can pierce through that darkness to shine brighter than the sun himself. And that light has a wonderful change on us. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8, For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Friends in Christ, when the light of Christ shines in our lives, it changes us. It dispels the darkness of sin and death and replaces it with hope and glory. But that light also has an effect on our entire being so that just as the moon reflects the light of the sun, so we reflect the light of the Lord through our entire lives. That's why Jesus says to us, you are the light of the world. And what a wonderful verse this is, as it reminds us how remarkable and glorious it is to be a Christian. For we can show the light of Christ in our lives to a world that so desperately needs the light. But what good is light if it does not give off light? Jesus says that people would not light a lamp and then put it under a basket so that the light cannot be seen. Light has only one purpose, and that is to give off light, to shine and illumine the darkness. Christ has given us his light so that we may shine and illumine the lives of others. Let your light shine before men, he says. Let it be seen. For when people see that light, 
they will glorify your Father in heaven. When they see what my light means in your life, then they will give glory to God and they will be drawn from the darkness to my saving light. And yet how often, how often do we do just the opposite and hide our light under a basket? In the Old Testament lesson today, we see God condemning the people of Israel for they have hidden their light inside. They had all the outward shows of religion, but their lives did not reflect the light of his saving truth at work in them. But God tells us, brighten up. That's what Jesus says to us too, to each of you. When people look at us, they should be affected by what they see so that they say, there is something different about him or her. If they cannot see anything different in us, then we have taken the light of Christ, which is to be reflected in our lives and hidden it away. In what a way that is. All around us, people are dying in sin. They are lost and without hope in the darkness of this world. But it does not have to be that way. Jesus says to us, you are the light that is going to make the difference. You have the light that can lead them out of their darkness. So, brighten up. Show by the things you do and say what I have done in your life. Be witnesses of my power to change lives. People will see your light and as a result, they will give glory to God, our Father. People will be moved to repentance and lives will be changed when your light shines for all the world to see. Are we shining with our God given light for the good of the people around us? Are we being the light of the world? You may not think of yourself as the light of the world or as a witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. But Jesus says that all believers are all witnesses, that we are that light. He tell us a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Whether or not we want to be witnesses does not matter. We are already witnesses of Jesus Christ. Whatever we do or fail to do as Christians is noticed and criticized by the world. That's why we should strive to shine as brightly as we can so that the world may see our good works and give glory to God. And there are many ways in which we can brighten up our lives. We give light to the world as we gather together, together for worship. For we show by our worship that God is important to us, important enough for us to dedicate the first hours of our week to Him. We give light to the world through our mission support. For in this way, the light of God's truth is carried out into the world. We give light to the world when we speak out against the evil of our world. Evil such as abortion and euthanasia, drugs, child abuse, and drug driving, and other vices. We can look back at the verses before our text, to the verses we call the Beatitudes, and see there how we can give light to the world. When we live as peacemakers, when we show kindness to those around us who need help, and when we show forgiveness to those who have wronged us, then we are letting our light shine before men. And that light does brighten up the lives of the people around us. 
friends in Christ, dear believers, people all around us are being influenced by all that we say and do. Even if they and we ourselves <clears throat> are not conscious of that fact. If we permit our Christianity to stop for just a little while by careless speech or improper conduct, we set a bad example and are likely to lead our fellow man astray. We cannot think that our lives, just because they are little, do not count, or that our actions are unimportant. Jesus says to every Christian, to each of you, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Our lives are to be the light that leads others through the darkness of this world of sin. So, brighten up. You are the light of the world. Do not hide your light under a basket, but let it shine brightly for all the world to see. And may God bless your light that it may shine brightly for the honor and glory of his holy name. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue collecting the offering and we sing the contemporary psalm, 10,000 reasons. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawn. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, oh, my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. Your slow to anger your name is great and your heart is kind for all your goodness I will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find oh bless the Lord oh my soul soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, worship your holy name, and on that day when my strength is faint, and draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years and then forever more oh bless the Lord oh my soul oh my 
soul worship his holy name sing like never before oh my soul worship your holy name so worship your holy rise for prayers. Almighty God, we give thanks for your liberating word made known especially in the light shining through the glorious cross of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Grant that your word enlighten our hearts and minds now that we may keep it and bring forth the fruits of faith in all that we say and do. Lord, in your mercy, by your light of life, rule and govern your whole church throughout the world, that all those who proclaim your truth be preserved in the pure doctrine of your saving word, and that faith and love be strengthened and increased in all your people. Lord, in your mercy. Bless our country and all who are in authority. Let your glory dwell in our land, that mercy and truth, righteousness and peace may abound everywhere. We commend to you the care of our schools so that our children grow in useful knowledge and Christian virtue, bringing forth wholesome fruits of life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Comfort all who are in trouble, sickness, anguish, or any other adversity, especially for Mary, for Wes, for Barb and Stu, for William, for Lloyd and Elsie, for Shirley and Douglas, for Vicky, for Patricia, for Dorothy, for Trevor, for Remy, for Rebecca, for Gerda, for Sandra, for Sarah, for Karen, for Shirley, for Nancy, for Sarah, for Alice, for Marcia, for Janice, for Al, for Ed and Pam, for Rachel and her children, for Jason, for Barbara, for Walter and Donna, for Stan, for Becky, for Anna, for Delbert, for Dolores, for Grace, for Nancy, and Pastor Ron Moore. We pray also for those who are in our hearts and minds. Grant courage and strength to all who suffer for your name's sake. In every time of trouble, show yourself a very present help, the Savior of all. Lord, your mercy. O oh Lord, look with kindness upon all the families of these congregations. And especially this day we remember Fabian, Jenna, and Alethea. For Shirley and Scott, for Daniel and Alexandra, and for Keith and Shirley. By your grace, strengthen them in love for you and for each other. And watch over them and keep them in times of difficulties, loneliness, and anxiety. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord of mercy, we pray for those who celebrate their birthdays this week. We remember Robin, Bereket, Sarah, Jim, Rowan, Clay, Amber, and Malcolm. O oh Lord, protect them and give them health, and they give you thanks for your mercy and trust in you each day of their life. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God of love, we pray for the people of Ukraine and Russia and other nations who are facing wars and social unrest. O oh God of peace, that violence will cease and the machines of war will be transformed into the implements of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Accept, we pray, our bodies and souls, hearts and minds, all our talents and powers, Together with the offerings we bring before you as our humble service, help us to prepare for the world to come, doing the work you have given us to do while it is day before the night comes when no one can work. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. 
Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Bless you, God. Now may the Lord hold you in the power of the Holy Spirit, keeping you always in the grace and peace won for us all by Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and lift you up in the freedom of divine grace and love, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming. God bless you. Have a good day. Go out and serve the Lord. But before you go out, go downstairs for coffee. <laughs>